If someone said, think of the emperor, I'm sure some of you would think of this, the vast majority of you would think of this, but maybe after this video, some of you will think of this. The German physics Emperor Extreme, a 65 kilogram, 300 watts into eight ohms, 600 watts into four ohms, 33,500 pound integrated amplifier. That's just an integrated amplifier, no DAC, no streamer, no phono stage built in, just an integrated amplifier. And what a thing. It's certainly a standout, striking design from the front, the side, the top, but what about the rear? Yes, you can see connections are plenty. Multiple balanced and single-ended options for inputs, for outputs if you want to use just a pre-amplifier, and also at the top, there are direct inputs that bypass the pre-amplification. And German Physics have designed this for use with their larger speakers and their Emperor Active crossover. Where the Emperor Extreme <laughs> Integrated gets used just for the treble, just for the tweeters. And the mind boggles at the thought of that, you know, a stack of German Physics Emperor amplifiers and their large, you know, em Emperor speakers with DDD drivers everywhere. The mind boggles at the thought of that in terms of what sound that system could produce. Coming back down to earth, well, almost. What's inside to get excited about? Well, first we have to remove the 17 kilogram lid. Yes, you heard me correctly. 17 kilograms just for the lid. And inside you can see internal heat sinks that are hidden for better aesthetics. A clever ventilation control plate to help manage the internal temperature across all of the important components and to keep the temperature even across both sides of the balanced amplifier. The plate is also a screen from EMI. Underneath the calling plate are two mono amplifiers, and these are the identical amplifiers that are used in the dedicated Emperor Stereo Power Amplifier. The design uses 12 bipolar devices and massive amounts of reservoir capacitors, with them being placed as close to the output devices to minimize loss from wire resistance. The power supply is underneath, so therefore I couldn't get it on camera. It's a 2500 VA toroidal transformer with separate windings for the power rails of each channel to keep things mono. The power supply can provide enough power so that the amplifier can double down its power from eight ohms to four ohms, and by all accounts from four ohms down to two ohms, but that's not officially stated. And the power supply by all accounts is so substantial that it would likely trip out fuses, but German Physics have designed in four different layers of soft start so that it does start softly, doesn't trip anyone's fuse obviously, and the amplifier actually takes about 20 seconds to fully turn on. Also underneath the power amplifier is the pre-amplification section, which has its own toroidal transformer and power supply section, again with separate windings for its dual mono fully balanced design. The volume control is a fully balanced relay switched resistor network design used to keep the input and output impedances constant so the sound doesn't change with volume. On the front there are a few buttons, but only one we really get to play with and that is the ground lift. If you get hum, you can lift the ground to stop it. However, if you use the bypass inputs as part of a full Emperor active system and you engage that mode by pressing the button on the rear that illuminates red, there are some sound tailoring and gain options. Again, just to clarify, these modes are only available with the Emperor integrated when you're using it as part of the full German physics active system. It's not something you can adjust when you're using it purely as an integrated amplifier. So obviously I didn't test that as part of this review. With all of that impressive technical information put to one side, why would an audio file spend 33,500 pounds on an integrated amplifier when they can buy lots of very capable, very high quality, separate components for that price tag? And I think that's a great question to ask because you know, the benefit of separates are maybe mix and match. You can try and tailor the sound some by you know, choosing a different preamp to a power amplifier. But I think most audiophiles would probably choose a pre and power combination because they feel it would give them the best sound. It would give them better performance. But I really don't know if that would be the case here because the 
Emperor integrated, it does sound like a very good pre and power combination or a pre and power setup. And then you have the benefit of that really with the convenience of only one box, which means less cables are needed, less hassle, less fuss, less trying to mix and match to find a sound synergy that you like, and maybe less rack space, although you still need a pretty big rack for a big boy amplifier like this. And I can definitely see some audiophiles preferring the single box solution simplicity. Especially when I say to you, I think the Emperor could be a perfect integrated amplifier. Now I fully appreciate that is a huge statement to make and there definitely are some big caveats to go with that, but I genuinely think the Emperor could be a perfect integrated amplifier. So I want to spend the rest of this review really looking at that and discussing that statement. There is the sound quality. I use the Emperor with three totally different speakers, one from German Physics, the HRS 130, and of course, you would expect this pairing to work great together, and it does. I also use the Emperor with the Martin Parker Duo Diamond, a totally different speaker, and the TAD Compact Evolution 1, totally different again. And the great thing about this was I got to hear different things about the amplifier, but really I wanted to check one main thing. I'm pretty confident now after listening through three different speakers that the Emperor amplifier was doing its job perfectly of amplifying the music without imparting its own sonic signature either on the music or on the hi-fi system or the speakers. And that is because I have enjoyed fantastic, clean, sweet, smooth, detailed treble from one speaker, then attacking sharper, crisp treble from the other. I have enjoyed a wide and the deepest soundstage I have ever had in my room with excellent layering from all of the speakers, but one more than the other two. I have enjoyed clean, smooth, coherent male and female vocals from all of the speakers, with one being slightly more full-bodied, one being slightly more relaxed and sultry, and the other one more crisp and clear. Vocals, I must say, have been particularly impressive from the Emperor amplifier, and that's because it's been delivering, I think, the perfect balance of smoothness, but with detail, vividness, but with delicacy, and the all-important tonality. I think the perfect blend of all of those. And I have enjoyed bass with the most amount of control from any amplifier I have reviewed to date. The level of control over the bass from the Emperor is insane. Bass is just tight and controlled. It's borderline too tight and controlled at times. And with all of the speakers, I have been sucked into listening to the music and ended up listening way beyond when I plan to every single time. And I have been listening to completely different music to normal and enjoying it for totally different reasons. But most importantly, I've just been really enjoying listening to music. And again, hearing all sorts of different things with all of these three different speakers, really been able to enjoy them individually for their standout characteristics and strengths, again with the Emperor not really imparting any of its own sonic signature on the sound, on the hi-fi system, or on the speakers. And these speakers are all very, very high quality, very highly resolving, and that leads me to believe that the Emperor has an insane low noise floor. And it definitely sounds more like a separate pre and power setup because it has that extra level of sophistication, that extra level of quality, and extra level of seriousness to how it presents music. But there are definitely some big caveats to me making the claim that this is a perfect integrated amplifier. And the first one is, cost. I haven't really reviewed other amplifiers around this kind of money. This is by far the most expensive integrated amplifier that I have reviewed so far. The closest I can get to this has been the Griffin Diablo 300, which is a very impressive integrated amplifier, but it's only really about one third the cost. And sadly, I didn't have the Diablo 300 here to compare, but what really impressed me about it when I reviewed it was its muscle, how it drives speakers. It gives you a very solid sound and a very powerful bass. And I was expecting something similar from the Emperor, but maybe even more so in that regard. But it doesn't sound like that. It sounds more mature, going about its job with a more delicate approach, and really you don't start to get the muscle type of sound until you really push the volume up, which of course I did a lot. <laughs> and that leads me to my second caveat being preference. The Emperor was so tight and controlled for bass that it did come across a little bit leaner than I'm used to with the first two speakers that I reviewed it with, so the German Physics and the Martin. 
But please don't confuse that comment with me saying that this amplifier is one of those kind of leaner, more analytical sounding amplifiers because it's really not. What I'm really saying is that I don't think it's adding any of its own maybe emphasis to bass or any coloration to the bass or maybe what our class as any fat on the bass. So that means if there's bass there, you get it. If it's not, you don't. And by that, I mean, obviously, if it's in the music or if it isn't in the music. But more than that, it's whether the speakers are delivering it and whether the speaker room interaction is allowing you to have it, allowing the speakers to deliver it. And this was proved to me with the TAD CE1 because they were creating a very different sound to the other two speakers, much fuller and bigger, and in a way, quite a bit heavier in the bass. I definitely think it's possible for another amplifier or maybe amplifier speaker combination to sound more muscular, to come across as more muscular, definitely more muscular in the bass. For better or for worse, maybe or maybe not, you know, an audio files preference, which leads me nicely onto the next caveat. Obviously, I didn't try the Emperor amplifier with, you know, very large, very high value speakers to be able to make the claim that it's a perfect integrated. I fully accept that. However, I do think, you know, larger speakers that produce more bass would be great with this amplifier because it's vice-like grip or control with its balance of a slightly more delicate presentation. Put that with some, you know, grander, more lively, bigger scale speakers. I think that would work. And of course, I would have loved to have had maybe some 60 or 100,000 pound large speakers here to test the Emperor with, but sadly, that just wasn't the case. And I think my last caveat would be the remote control. It's nice and it works perfectly well. And I feel like some other manufacturers, standout ones, definitely do this aspect better, such as maybe Deviolet. However, I don't think anyone would discount the Emperor over the remote control, so they get a pass on that from me. So who is the German Physics Emperor Extreme Integrated Amplifier for? Well, I think if you are looking for an amplifier to add a strong character to your hi-fi system or maybe your hi-fi speakers, well, then this probably will not be for you. However, if you value sonic transparency, if you value a clean sound, that will allow your hi-fi system and speakers sound to come through. If you value controlled and tight bass, and if you want an amplifier that can do all of that while still sounding musical, and this is your budget, I think whether you're shopping for separates or maybe an integrated, the Emperor is very much worthy of your consideration. I think the Emperor is a grower type of amplifier more than a shower type of one. And it only takes a couple of minutes of interacting with it. And definitely after seeing the internal components of how well it's been built, you can see that it's an amplifier designed to serve its owner well for decades. And I've massively enjoyed my time with it. It's been a real pleasure and a real treat to you know, listen to and review an amplifier at this kind of level, at this kind of lofty price, of course, but lofty sound performance level as well. If you get the opportunity to listen to one, definitely take it. And it's definitely raised my expectations of what an integrated amplifier can offer. And I wonder whether there'll be any other amplifier that tops the Emperor for that lid. Will there be an amplifier that has a lid heavier than 17 kilograms? Only time will tell. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. Hope you found it useful and helpful. If you enjoyed it, obviously hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Of course you have. There will be a sound demonstration video for the Emperor with two of the three speakers mentioned in the review, the German Physics HRS 130 and the Martin Parker Duo Diamond Edition. Those will be coming soon. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye.